Okay, here is another one of my tutorial videos that I'm bringing to you. This one is showing you how to add highlights to your designs. Um, I had already done the shading part in a separate video, so this one was basically showing you how to do some highlights. And all of the fun that went with it. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to start on our bow here. We're going to add some highlights on our bow. <clears throat> the first thing that I want to do, I'm going to lay this down flat because I want to practice showing you how I load my brush. This is how I do it. Like I said, every teacher, every designer, every artist is different. Okay, the first thing that I always do whenever I sit down to paint is spritz the side of my palette paper with water. We get all kinds and sizes of dots there. Now, the more that you spray in one place, the bigger the dots get, okay? <clears throat> but I always have water. This is my clean water that I use for when I'm floating. I never go to my brush basin except to wash my brush, brush out. So this is my clean water that uh, I use for floating. All right, I'm going to put a little bit of paint out here. And I'm going to get a flat brush because a flat brush is really um, one of my favorite brushes to uh, float with. Let me zoom you in here a little bit. Okay, so my brush is dry right now, so we have to wake our brush up. It It's not going to paint for me if I just go over here and pick up some water on it and think okay it's got water it's gonna work no I got the tips of my bristles wet but they're not wet all the way inside through and all the way up to the ferrule we gotta have water in it all the way up so in order to do that and please forgive my dirty filthy basin here we put our um, paintbrush in the water we let it fill up um, generally I just kind of push it against the side and let it get nice and full. If I'm busy doing something I can rest it here but I don't like to rest it in the water very long. It's not really good for the brushes. So um, I push it against the side, get the bristles full. They're nice and plump. They're completely full of water. Too much water to start painting with. See that shine on there? So we are going to wick out the excess water. We've, we've got our, our uh, bristles awake, so now we got to get it ready to paint. So we lay it on this side, and we flip it over, and we lay it on this side. Okay, it just took out all the excess water. I'm going to clean my ferrule off. We don't want water on our ferrule. That's just a mess waiting to happen there. Okay, so how I load for floating is I dip the corner of the brush in the paint. Okay, then I begin a lot of, okay, let me just show you how I do mine. I begin right here next to the paint and do a V. And I just continue back and forth loading the paint into my brush. Now I have a lot of water here. Okay, so if I feel like it's too much water, I'm going to go lay my brush on my paper towel let the water that's in my brush come out. I still need water. Right here might be enough water for me to get my floating job done. So I'm going to go right back here and continue loading. Now, if you want a super duper soft sheer float, and in a lot of my paintings I say I want a sheer float. I want you to build up in layers of sheer colors. Um, I, fe I feel like that's the best way to get real depth in your painting. So when I say that, I want you to continue to work. I pulled it away so I wouldn't continue to get paint from the puddle there. Continue to work the paint and the water in your brush. Just keep working it. Keep working it. It's going to push that paint up the bristles. See, the paint's way up there in the bristles now. It's going to push it up there and the water is going to start blending with that paint and softening that paint down so you've got a nice sheer color now so when you go to paint 
you're just laying down a sheer color onto your project. So when I say a sheer float, that's what I mean. So you've got to have the water in your brush. Let me show you what I see a lot of people doing when they load their brush. So they've gotten their bristles damp, but they have removed every lick of water out of their brush. They have just taken it to their paper towel and just squeezed all the water right out of it. Oops, excuse me. They've just squeezed it all out. So basically it's a it's it's no longer a conditioned brush. It's just a slightly damp brush. So then they come over here and they start loading. I still have quite a bit of water in my brush, I can tell. So let me get some of that water out. They'll load their brush. And a lot of people load their brush like this. And that's fine if you have if that is the way that you like to load, go for it. But that it doesn't work for me. I have to do the little V back and forth. So they load their brush or they just come over here and they get some paint and they go like this. So when they go to paint, although that's got a gradation of color, they don't normally get a gradation of color. They just get a line like that. No gradation of color, just a line. It is because they don't have enough water in their brush. So watch when I go pick up. I'm going to go pick up some water. I'm going to come over here away from any of that paint and work it into my brush with the paint that's in there. You want to feel it softening in your brush. You want to feel that paint getting soft. Okay? And then... When you come and paint, look how soft of a float that is. And you can just paint away. Now, right there, that is what you call walking out with a float. So, to do that, you have to have paint and water in your brush. Whenever I pick up paint, I generally pick up water and I work them into my brush at the same time. Don't just go pick up a drop of paint and come and paint. A drop of water and come and paint. Same with paint you have to work it into your brush to get it the way that it needs to be in order to paint well. So when you want to walk out a float, so I've got the water and the paint in my brush, okay, so I'm going to lay down my, my paint, I need a little bit more paint, work it in there, easy peasy, lay down my brush, and so I've laid down water over here so I can move my paint over to that water and just keep walking it out. And you just keep walking it out until you don't want to walk it out anymore. Okay? When I say walking out a float, that's what I mean by walking out a float. Okay? So how you load your brush is extremely important. You've got to have some water in there. You've got to have a little softness so you, you've got to be able to feel the paint getting soft in your brush. And then you're going to have super soft, amazing, wonderful floats. So any brush that you use for floating will always be loaded the exact same way. I can't think of any brush that I use, an angle brush, a curved flat, a flat. I can't think of any brush that I float with that I would not use this type of technique to get my brush loaded the proper way to paint. So, once you have loaded your brush, so let me load it back up with some paint. I painted it all off. Also, when you're loading, when you're loading your brush for floating, I see a lot of people doing this. They come here, they come over here, they come over here, over here. They're, they're all over their palette. Well, all you're doing is removing your paint. You need to stay in one place and load your brush. I like to stay right next to the paint because then the my loading will stay moist. If it dries out where I'm loading my brush then I move over a little bit and start a new spot. But I don't move all over my palette to load. Okay. So we've got our brush loaded. So we want to add some highlights on this ribbon here. Oh, let me put this back up. It'll make it much easier. I have a lot of people ask me about this easel, this artist easel. So real quick, let me mention it. This is a rotating artist easel. It has a, mine has this little block to lock it if I don't want it to spin. 
and it raises to several different heights there. So you can have it, you know, straight up and down like this if you wanted. But this, you can get, this one where I, I purchased it no longer sells them. But um, the Artist Club sells them. Um, so you can visit their website. I will try to remember to put a link to them at the bottom of this video if I do not forget. All right, my paint got dry, so I went and got some water. Now I'm working it back into my brush here. I always touch my paper towel before I go to my surface just to get any excess off of there. So we want to highlight along this edge right here. We'll highlight along this edge. I'm using, I guess it really doesn't matter what colors I'm using because this is just demo purposes. Let me zoom in a little bit here. We'll go along this edge. Down here. We want to go, I'm going to hold it straight up and down be on the very edge of the bristles here and add a little highlight next to our I'm just going to tap that in next to our little wrinkles there okay we'll put a little bit of a float floated highlight up here on this edge but we're going to do a a back to back float on here. I really want to show you how to do those. So we'll just put a little bit out there. We can put a little bit on this edge. And you can also put some wrinkles. I need some water. You can also put some of the wrinkles that we put out here on our knot here. That would be very pretty. And we'll put a little bit out here. That white that's out there was my pencil that I used to draw those lines in so I just removed it with some water so it wouldn't be too distracting for me. Okay so now I want to show you how to do a back-to-back -back float. Um, I love doing these especially on ribbon. They are um, I think they're pretty easy to do. So how you do one is you you have water and paint loaded in your brush. So you lay the paint down like this. You can walk it over a little bit if you want. And then you flip the brush over so the paint is next to, right next to, the other one that you just put down. And I always mop my back-to-back -back floats. Like I said, other teachers, instructors, designers, artists will do something different. This is how I do mine. Can't really see that too well on that um, gray background there. So let me go over here and do it on the bow. So let me load my brush. Okay, now I'm going to come down my ribbon here. And I'm going to walk this over a little bit because I'm going to come back with a brighter highlight on top of this. And I'm going to come down this edge of it. And I'm going to mop that very gently. Soften and it will remove, slightly remove a little bit that was in the center. Okay, we'll go to the other side over here. So I'm going to Lay my brush down, flat, soft pressure. Flip it over, paint to paint. You should have enough water in your brush to carry this back-to-back -back float. When you flip your brush over, it should have enough water to um, carry that float. If you don't, very quickly go pick up some water and work it in because you don't have a whole lot of time before that starts drying because you do have so much water in there you don't want it to dry. I got paint down there. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Along here we're going to do a back-to-back -back float. I'm going to kind of curve it to follow the shape of the ribbon. And then we'll do one here. Kind of walk it out. 
very gently float or mop that. Okay, a little more water, a little more paint. Touch your paper towel, and we'll go here. Very gently mop. That had a lot of water in it. Okay, we can put one across the center here too. We can put a back to back float. Which almost, the brush I'm using almost filled the whole center of that. <laughs> It's really going to make that knot look raised up. Okay, so that was our first back-to-back -back float there. They're pretty easy. The hardest thing, well, I don't think there's anything hard about them. Um, the, the only important thing that you want to make sure is that you have enough water in your brush with a back-to-back -back float. You need that water in there. So I'm going to add a little bit of highlight, uh, a little bit of Snow White to my blue here to make my highlight a little bit brighter. Touch my paper towel and we'll go down this again and mop it. Down this side. This will fade down in there and just be beautiful. It's going to make the ribbon look like silk. I probably should go to a smaller brush because I like for my floats to get smaller and smaller and not to take up the whole same area where I just had previously done here. This one looks like it has a little bit more white in it than the other ones did. Okay, just gently mop that. And we'll go across our center here. I'm gonna mop it. Hard edge right here. A little bit of water. Try and soften that down. I don't think it softened it too much, but we got one more float we have to come back with. So I'm going to put a little bit of this down here. A little bit down here. Just a tiny bit along this edge here. And let's go up here and put a little bit on this edge. Use my finger and just pull it out and soften it down. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush out. And get all my paint out. Okay, so this time I want to go with just white. So again, we're loading it the same way. Get the water off the ferrule of my brush. Just a little bit of white on the side of that brush. Just a little bit. I didn't work it up in there very far. Touch my paper towel. And then we're going to come down right there. Our brightest little... Uh, shine mark here. Um, keep it a little bit more concentrated in the center here. Look at how that ribbon just pops, how it looks like silk. Need some water. Work it in. Touch my paper towel. That's a lot of paint there. Okay, remove some of that. Woo! Too much water. Okay, 
Okay, one more. Soften very gently. A hard line on that one. Don't really like that. So I'm going to dampen it and take the mop brush. Generally, everything is fixable. You just have to be patient, not freak out, um, and um, just think of a plan. I don't know if that's going to be much better than the first one. A little bit better. Okay, I got to get some of this paint off my brush. So then we'll just put, a, I mean, I have the tiniest little dots of paint on my brush here. Put some here. Yeah, a little bit. Woo! Or a lot. Up there. I'm just going to take the water edge and pull that and thin it so that it's just an, a small little line there. You got the water on your brush. You can do a lot of things. Okay. And the more detail that you give anything, the more realistic it's, it's going to look. place we need to add a little bit of white across the center here. Love that. And there we go. Our ribbon is done. It's got both the shading which was in a previous video and a highlight. Now um, you could also highlight this outer edge here if you wanted to. And um, give that a little highlight. So th it would not be wrong there. It would be the same as us highlighting up and down here. Go out here and highlight the edges. Which would probably be a good idea. It would kind of tie it together a little bit more. So I'll just do one quick highlight of that mid color which was white and the blue mixed together. Just kind of tie it all. Don't go through our shading area. So we can go out here. Okay. That brings it more together a little bit, I think. Alright, so that is it for our bow. So that was teaching you back-to-back -back floats on that one. Very easy to do. Very easy to do. Okay, I'm going to move up here to our bell. I think I will I'll put a little bright yellow out on my palette here. So it's going to be a, a fairly simple um, highlighting technique. So again, load your brush the same way with your paint and your water. Now whenever I say you're going to use just basically straight paint. That means you're not going to get extra water to load in your brush. You're just going to load it with the paint. No extra water is needed. So with the yellow that I'm using here, which is cad yellow, it's a pretty transparent yellow. So you can just go straight paint and not add any extra water to your brush. So we're going to come over here on this side. I don't think it's going to show up too well. I'll put a little bit up here. I want a reflective light down here. That's why I say with cad, cad yellow you can use straight paint because it is so transparent and sheer. I'll use this brush and, and just slide a, some of that across that. 
Okay, I'm going to pick up a little bit of white with that cad yellow now. So just blend it well on your brush. I'm still not going to add any extra water yet, I don't think. Well, maybe one little drop. I don't want tons of water. Touch your paper towel. I want to make sure that's dry before I start painting because I will just remove it if it's not. So we're going to float along this edge. Now I want to bring it out a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of walk it out. Something in my paint there. And I'm going to tap that because I had to dig that, whatever that was. I got the hair in there. The tortures of painting. Okay, I think I want to bring this down and over just a little bit. We want it to be shiny. Put a little bit up here. Just using the corner of my brush here. I'm going to put some of this in here. Keep it more in the center. Definitely going to need some water now. It's not want to come off my brush. If it doesn't want to come off your brush, you need water. Okay. A little bit of reflective light over here. I want to keep that kind of narrow. I don't want it to get too big, so I'll take the water edge and soften it. I need to put some highlight over here, so let me go back into my straight cad yellow here. A little bit right there. Add a little bit of white to it. And this up here definitely needs to be brighter, so a little more white. And it should be dry by now. I'm going to bring this over just a little ways there. Okay, I'm going to move to just for a minute. I'll come back to this brush, but I'm going to move to a small round brush so I can create a small highlight here with some white. And up here. Okay, and then I'm just going to tap some of this white in here for a highlight. Maybe smudge it with my finger a little bit. Okay, tap and smudge. Every time I smudge I'm moving the paint so let me tap just a little bit easier probably because I have paint on my fingers. So with paint on my fingers and I touch paint to soften it I'm just going to remove paint because it's going to stick to the paint on my fingers and just come right off. I'll put a little line there. And I think that shines up our bell pretty good. Maybe a little bit more highlight up here. And I've got that dark on that edge, but I'm thinking it needs to be bright because all of my highlight is on this side. That will get just a little bit of highlight. So, I'm going to show you how to fix that. Our base color was moon yellow. So, we're going to take that color and we're just going to paint that in. Pull it across there. I'm going to go into my cad yellow with a little bit of white. And I'm going to pull some of that across there. And we 
can go with just a little bit of straight white and kind of add that on there for a little light. And that looks much better. I'm going to refloat underneath it because I kind of messed up the shape. This is not a shading video, but because I had to repair that, I need to repair the, the shade underneath it. That looks better. I think that finishes our belt off pretty good. There are so many other things that you can do when you're making uh, shiny bells. Like there's metallic paints that you could add to that. I would um, shear them down and wash a sheer metallic over it. Let's see if I've got one handy. have this gold but it's more of a really brown gold I don't have a I don't have a yellow yellow gold so this I would have to use sparingly so I have a little drop of it out there it's just a metallic paint all the paints that I use are deco art brand all of them okay so I'm gonna take some of this metallic paint and really, really thin it down with some water. Make it sheer. You're just tinting some water here is all you're doing. And then you can brush this over it. The whole thing. Well, you could probably stay off of your dark areas there, which we need to touch that one up, but I'm not going to do it in this video because this is just practice. It's not Make sure you get to your edges without going past them. And we'll have to let it dry, see if it's going to have enough sparkle to it or not. We might have to come back and add a second coat on there. Okay, so that has our bow and our bell done with our highlights. So far so easy, huh? Okay. All right, let's move to our cherry here. So, with our cherry, I'm, I got moon yellow out already. I'm going to start with some yellow on it, okay? The cherry's going to be pretty easy. I think before I paint the cherry, I'm going to put my stem in because I want to show you how to add a highlight on the stem. So we're going to have some cocoa and some, some of the green that we put on our leaf here. So I'll take, you can use a, a detail liner for this. Too much water in my brush. So we're just going to start here at the base and paint in our stem. They're kind of curly. Okay, we're going to take some green. They're kind of green here at the ends. So we can just kind of tap that on the end. Okay. Then back here, at the very back of them, they'll be dark. So, I find my soft black. Little tiny dot of that out. So back here, they'll be dark coming out of the cherry. Kind of pull that up a little bit. I'm going to get a little bit of my cocoa so I can blend that and not have it be so stark. Okay, and then to highlight these, it's pretty easy. We're just going to take some white and kind of dot dot kind of along it. And that's all we have to do to really highlight the stem. The stem is, is fairly easy. Um, I just wanted to show you how to do that highlight. Okay, so with our cherry I'm going to take a little bit of moon yellow, not very much on my brush, I'm really working it in there, and we're going to highlight the 
this edge of our cherry. We're going to highlight around the stem area. Got a lot of water in my brush there. That's really going to fade down in there. I want to carry that out a little bit more. I'm going to mix some cad yellow with my moon yellow just to brighten it up a little bit. You could use tangelo orange on your cherry. Um, I want to have a lot of that down in there. All right, a lot of water. So let me mop that. Okay, this needs to be a little bit ye more yellow here. I still need that highlight to be over farther. So let me mix up a little bit more. I'm doing cad yellow and moon yellow, probably two cad yellow to one moon yellow, just because the cad yellow is transparent. And if I put it on there, it would take a bazillion layers to get it to look like cadmium yellow. So I um, need to mix a color that's more opaque. Okay, well, I walked that way down there. I'm going to mop it, and I've got some hard, really hard lines. Let me zoom you in here. All these lines back here are very hard lines. So I'm going to take the water edge of my brush, which I don't have enough in, and very... Oh, I'm removing the paint. Uh, the paint dried too quickly. So... So I still removed a little bit of that. All right, a little bit of yellow here. Okay, I'm going to wash that color out of my brush. I'm going to go just into some white now, and I'm going to go back to my round brush. Okay? Now, there are many different ways that you can do cherries. You don't have to use yellow. I think in the past all I've ever used is a white, so. so I'm just going to put a highlight here, maybe tap some in there, I'm going to wide angle you out so you can kind of see it. Now this is the point where to me it's not red enough. So what I do with my cherries every single time, any time, anything that I make red, and I really want the red to pop, um, you can use this Neon's Fiery Red. It will make a red pop well. But I like to use Cherry Red and just make a wash of it. Which again, like we did with the um, gold that we put on there, we just take some water in our brush here and we just tint the water we want enough in our brush to uh, carry it over the whole thing that we're going to be painting and then I just come in here and I just wash over my entire cherry now I would probably darken this edge more it's not um, dark enough for me and you could do this before you add your your white in there so you don't have to try and stay off your white. So I'm just going to paint over the white so I can get that red on there. Cover the whole thing. I want that cherry to pop. I'm going to mop my white. It's not going to take all the red off of it, but it will take some of it off. And now I'll just come back and stroke my white in there. But you really want that cherry, that that cherry red on there. But this side definitely needs to be darker. I mean, it needs to be tons darker. And um, I think in my shading video, I said that um, I would come back and probably 
darken that even more with black. And um, I'm pretty sure I did not do it in the video. So I'm going to take some black. I'm going to work it into my brush to get it not super dark and not super hard within my brush. Okay, see I've created a softness there. This is not dry by any means, so I can't apply any paint to it until it is completely dry. So if you got a little portable fan, they are super handy, especially taking your classes. Highly recommend you getting one. I do have these on my website for a limited time, so um, I have limited stock of them and I haven't been able to find them to purchase more, so I don't know if it will be a no longer on my website kind of item or not. Okay, so I'm going to put some black down here. A little bit more black in my brush here. Down here. Just want that to look much richer. And the black just seems to make that happen. On the cherries. Okay, and we also want to go here and set that stem down in there, even deeper down in that cherry. Okay, I I think the cherry could use another glazing of the red, but um, I want to move on. I'll go ahead and put one on it and let it dry, and then I'll come back and and highlight some more. It just really needs to pop in here. I don't want to go down in there into my black because I don't think it's quite dry. Okay, and that's going to look so much better once we put the white back on there. So let's check out our bell. Can we see any shine on that bell yet? Nope. I can see just a hint of it. So I'm going to make another wash of that gold and put it on there. And if this gets to where it takes our highlight off, then I will come back and add it in here. And don't forget our little thing up here. Pulling it up to the light to see any place that I might have missed. We want it to all be covered with the shine. Yeah, I'll have to add the white back onto there. Okay, this is dry, so let's get our white on here and we can be done with our cherry. So again, just tap in some white for a highlight. And there we go. The cherry is done. It's done. Okay. So we have our leaf and our apple. Apples. So on our apples up here, I'm going to take some moon yellow. Ooh, too much water in my brush. Way too much water in my brush. And we're going to... Ooh, way, way, way too much water. I think I'll go with cad yellow because it's more sheer. I want the, the more sheer up here. So see, I have way, way, way too much water in my brush. So when I'm doing a big highlight like this, I like to come out in a V like this and pull that out into a V to where I want it to go. And then I take my mop brush and I mop the whole thing very gently because I don't want to remove all that paint. I just want to kind of soften it down in there. Too hard of a line on this edge. So I'm going to tap just a little bit harder to kind of smooth that out. I know it looks terrible, 
but um, trust me, you've got to have some faith. Everything has to go through its ugly stage. Everything. So over here, definitely need more water and paint. So I'm just using the cad yellow, remember? Okay. And try and keep that a little bit more concentrated there. All right, into the paint. Remove a little bit of it and then come back and I got some hard edges here. I'm not doing a very good job of showing you how to highlight because I'm getting hard edges all over the place. So, here's what we do about that. We just take some water because that float was mostly water. didn't have much paint in it, but I don't know how I got a hard edge with such a little, little amount of paint. And we're just going to remove it. Okay, that's that. I feel like my highlight on my cherry got too bright. Too bright, I'm telling you. much straight paint. I didn't have enough water in my brush so when you're doing your highlight on the cherry maybe not get so heavy handed like I did there. That's a little heavy handed. Just a touch heavy handed. Alright, let me work my paint back into my brush just like I showed you. And Let's see if I can do this this time. My cad yellow is just not wanting to flow. Alright, I'm just going to go that far and mop real quick. Because that cat yellow is really wanting to dry on there. I'll put a little bit of highlight here. Take the water edge and kind of thin it and pull it out, soften the edges. We're also going to need a little bit here. Soften it out. Okay, so let's do a reflective highlight over here. tight there on that edge. Almost looks like a peach. Looks fuzzy like a peach. But we're not going for the peach look. Okay, some white and cad yellow mixed together. Too much paint in my brush here. Okay, our second highlight. We don't want to go out as far as we did with the last one. Everything gets smaller. I want to make sure that's dry. Okay, that's getting a pretty nice highlight on there. We're going to add some white. We need a little bit of reflection down here, I think. Keep it right against that edge. 
soften it out. So when I say soften it out, you want the edges to like fade away. I want them to just like disappear. Okay, so that is our second highlight. So we've got one more highlight on our apples to make and we're going to go with straight white now. Work it into your brush. Okay, I want to make sure this is dry. Always make sure you're dry. Okay, this is just going to be a, a bright little highlight there. We'll put a little bit here. And then on this one, we'll put it mostly here. And a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. And with the apples as well, if you wanted them more red, again, you could put some of that cherry red on them. Oh, I wanted to show you how to do a bullseye float on the apple here. So. I am going to show you how to do that. Let me put my my red over here. This is the, just that wash of cherry red. I'll take my finger and kind of push that around. It's going to brighten up our cherries nicely. Okay, so while that's finishing drying, I'm really not happy with this one. I'm about ready to paint over it. But I don't want this video to be forever long. Just know I'm not happy with that. Let's put some white back up here. Don't use the same finger that you used over there because you'll not be happy. Bit here, a little bit here. I'm just having a hard time with these little dabby highlights. Never had so much trouble with them ever before. Now that I want to make a video showing you exactly how to do them. Let's see, does that have any shine in it now? Well, I can see it. I can see it, but it's not showing up on the camera, so I can't show it to you because it's not showing up. Okay, I want to show you how to make a bullseye float, so we're going to go over here with some white and load a little bit on your brush with some water. you got to make sure with a bullseye float that you have plenty of water. Okay, so to do a bullseye float, you're going to just paint obviously you're going to keep the paint always to the center and just make a circle but the paint always has to be in the middle and you can just continue to to work that and soften it or you can take your mop brush and very gently tap 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 and that will soften it down. Okay, so we want to put a bullseye float on here. I want to show you how to do these different different highlights. So let's make sure we're dry. I'm going to start here. I'm going to tap, 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 tap. Make sure you've got water on your brush, otherwise you're just laying down straight paint and you won't get a nice gradation of color right there. I'm going to tap, 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 and we got a nice bullseye float there. So let's put one 
on the other apple right here. Tap, tap, tap. You can go down to a smaller brush, depending on the size of the area you're trying to put a bullseye float in. And then tap, tap, tap. Wide angle out. And to finish off a bullseye float. Now, if, if it fades back down in there too far and you want it even brighter, you can just repeat it. I kind of do want that one a little bit brighter. So let's make sure it's dry. I'm going to tap, tap, tap. Get it a little bit brighter. And then tap, tap, tap. A little bit more on this one. Right where the center of the bullseye would be, basically. And then just take your white paint and put a little dot inside that bullseye. And there you have your bullseye float. Okay, that is just making me crazy, I have to tell you. It's just making me seriously crazy. So we have our leaf left to um, do. I have to cover this up, I'm sorry. So let me put a little bit of yellow in there so I can cover up that white. Or not. That white is serious stuff now. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna repaint that cherry because I, I don't like it, and I just want you to know I don't like it. <laughs> just in case you wonder if I like it or not, I do not like it. No, sorry, don't like it. We just need a little bit more. Highlight on this edge here. It's got to have that shine. My white's about to dry up over here. Okay, a little bit brighter here because I feel like it faded down in there. I could even go brighter here. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, in case you were wondering. Just in case. Alright, so I'm going to let this dry. <laughs> what a mess of a cherry. But I want you to know how to fix things. Because we all make mistakes. And that was a serious mistake, I'm telling you. Okay, let's go over to our leaf while that cherry tries to... I don't know <laughs> what it's trying to do. Okay, so for our green here our leaf. Let's highlight out here on the edge here. Put a little bit here. Keep that water in your brush so you can so it will soften it down in there. Okay, so we need to highlight whoa maybe not with that much paint. not that much paint at all so just take that off it's just paint it's fixable we want to put some highlight in between all 
I drew out a couple other leaves here and I might paint them in real quick because I want you to um, see how to do a turned edge on a leaf. Okay, so we can go out here on these edges. Let's bring the tip all highlight. Drag some in the center, kind of like we did over there. Maybe not back there in that back one. This leaf could definitely be much, much darker back here at the base. So I'm going to thin some of this light green paint out. And actually, let me get a little bit of the dark green. We'll bring the well. <laughs> oh golly! Bring the dark green in there, wipe it off, then pick up the light green, let it continue from there, and we'll go down the center, go down our veins here. You really just want to go down the center of them, not have them touch that one. Over here. up a little bit of white and maybe definitely my paint is getting thick here we'll put some white down the center and down the center of our veins here and we can do this side now if you watch my shading video, these two sides were painted differently, so that's why the leaf looks the way it looks. And then if this is connected to a tree anywhere, you could bring some brown onto the stem back here. Okay, let me put another coat on this cherry. Oh, okay. Or a ton of water. I don't know. I'll be getting a thumbs up on this video. Whoa. It's getting serious now. This is our base color. It's still not covering that white up. I should probably make some gray because that's the only thing that's going to take it down. The only thing. So I think if I was to do my bells again, I probably wouldn't add that gold on there. Because now that it's on there, I don't know that it made any difference or that I like it. But again there, it's a personal preference. So if it's something you like, go for it. So I'm going to cover this up with some gray here. And just kind of work it out. much removed, of course. Okay, I'm going to let that gray set. Alright, let me quickly paint in, I'm going to paint in this bigger leaf over here. And can't really see it on the lines. Because I want to show you how to do a turned edge. You know, normally when I paint for a class, I give away my uh, board that I painted on. I don't think anybody would want this one. <laughs> oh my gosh, golly gee. It's just sad. So sad. So, so sad. Okay, 
this needs to be darker it just needs to be and I know this is not a shading video but since I put that gold on there it's just bugging me it took my shading down it took my highlight down so maybe add the gold before but I don't know if that will take the shine off of it so it's a tough call there I like my bling on things but I tend to like my glamour dust bling <laughs> so that's what I like to bling out with okay nope that's not dry and I just removed the paint my finger because it wasn't dry live and learn live and learn fan out here because everything is just wet. I'm glad this isn't a live video demonstration because I could only imagine the comments, the giggles. Yay, she's messing up like I'm messing up. Oh yes, we all do it. Generally not when I'm teaching something though, so her with me, hang in there with me, don't leave me. All right, I'm gonna make some cherry red with the country red and make a mess. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> oh lordy lordy. It's the end of the day for me, so I probably should not be painting at all. It is well past dinner time. I'm surprised my husband hasn't been. When are we going to eat? Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to go any farther with that cherry as far as bringing the colors back out because I just want to show you how to fix it. So I covered that up. I had to cover it up with the gray because nothing was taking that white down. So, um,. I use gray a lot to cover up errors and then repaint it. So really all I need to do here is come back with my layers with my shading down here and then redo my highlight up there and this time tiny 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 bit of white so I would dampen it first for my highlight and then tap some white in there and let it kind of disperse. There we go. So over here on my leaves, that one feels pretty dry, this one's not. I want to make a turned edge here. So, let's see, do I have a dark green on here? First, I'm going to show you how to um, a little bit of black. I want my green to be my green to be super dark. It's not black. I think my soft black has a black dot on top of it because I keep picking it up thinking it's black. But it's not. Okay. So our green. I want to make like a black green. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of black with a dark green. And um, So for this small leaf over here, this is not a shading video, but I need to show you so that I can highlight it so if you watch the shading video already, here's an extra bonus for you in the highlight video. <laughs> Shade back there at the back. Now this one I want to make a turned edge on. So let's bring some turnage right there. Okay, let's zoom in just a little bit. Hopefully I won't get you off camera. I'm surprised I haven't yet. And we are going to tuck some of this dark color around this turned edge and we need some to come back here along this bottom edge and we want to create a center vein just by floating down the center there you can smooth it out with your water edge of your brush
And then we'll also do a cinder vein here. So this is kind of a a more simple leaf. Doesn't have detail like that one. I'm not going to get too involved in the shading here because what I really want to show you is the highlighting. So to highlight, actually this one needs a little bit more shading. Back here. At the base. Okay, that's pretty sloppy shading, but that's not what this video is about. I keep telling you, it's about highlighting. I don't know why you keep wanting me to do the shading. Alright, some highlights here and here, along the vein and on that edge, and you probably weren't on camera for any lick of that, were you? Go ahead, let me have it, go ahead. I know. You're already telling me this is the worst video ever. I can hear it. I know it is. I know it. Alright. Too much paint. Wipe it off. Come back. And we want to highlight along that edge. Not pick up our wet dark paint, but that's exactly what I did. Go down the center vein. You want to wait until your paint over there is dry. Now you could just not highlight on that edge and leave it open and just highlight in the middle. If you wanted to, I'm going to put a little bit over here. Not too much. Pretty sloppy leaves, let me tell you. <laughs> they are super, super crazy sloppy. Uh, while I have this dark color out to not to show you not shading but highlighting, <laughs> I'm going to shade this leaf because it needs a lot more darkness. to give it much more depth. This one, see this side I went all the way down to show you the difference between the two. Anyway, so there you have it. Shading in a floating video. Don't hate me. No haters. Okay, this is not up to color, <laughs> not the kind of color I want, but I am going to go ahead and add a highlight on it. We'll get it somewhat up to color. Okay, so. To do a much better highlight, I've got just a little bit of paint, lots of water, and I'm just going to tap in a little highlight there, a little highlight here, and just a couple places on here, wherever you think a, a highlight needs to be. So, much better, much softer. <laughs> I like that much better. Oops, I want to take you out, not zoom you in. I want to blind you there. I would come back when that dries and do a second um, little soft highlight, just like I did that one. Lots of water on my brush, a little bit of paint, and the water will help it to stay soft and just go down in there. Okay, well... <laughs> This one, I hope, has been a learning video, and um, sorry for all the frustrations with it and the errors and the, the shading in a highlighting video, but I hope that you picked up some good tips on this and um, learned some things, and if you have any questions at all, please post them below. I will try to remember everything that I said that I would post below and um, get you the details on that stuff. Again, the paint that I always use is Americana Deco Art. This Deco Art. This is the old label. Let's see if I have a new label. Here's the new label. Deco Art Americana paint, and um, 
any questions whatsoever thank you so much for watching my video i am just completely out of it it is definitely time for supper for me thank you so much for painting with me and i will see you guys on the next one